So when you buy something, you don't get to choose the packaging it comes in. What ends up happening is the burden becomes, it becomes a, a consumer problem. So the the factories or whoever's making it Excellent. will wrap it, but then you have to be the one to dispose of it. You're the one with the guilt behind it. You're the one who's actually thinking you're the one doing wrong and it's not fair. Hi there, welcome to Finding Space with Alex Tyson, the show that celebrates the everyday legends who put in the hard work to become who they want to be and live the life they want to live. For people who understand that when we practice compassion and find wisdom within ourselves, we find success and happiness. Join me in hearing amazing stories from everyday individuals who have found incredible personal and professional growth through varied and, at times, wild methods of self-improvement and self-responsibility. And through their unique perspectives and work, have gone on to better the lives of those around them. From nurturing health to growing your wealth or enjoying the present to crafting your future, no aspect of life is off topic. Anita Saka, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. I'm so glad I'm here. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a nice, nice conversation and just a good time to kind of check in, talk about some cool stuff, you know, have a bit of fun. So I'm really glad you're here. Thanks for coming. Thank on. you. Oh, thank you. Mm. Um, tell me, you do hero packaging. You're kind of the face for the brand. Mm -hmm. You guys have been doing some awesome stuff. You're releasing some new products. It looks like you guys are blowing up. How do you how do you manage a growing business with also having children and family? How do you do that? It's hard. It, it's really hard and it's such a loaded question. Uh, everything is, nothing happened all at the same time. Everything was step by step. So it was first having the kids and learning how to be a good parent and then starting a business and learning how to be a good business owner and also remembering that I'm married and also have to be a good partner. Uh, I think it's just, it's a really difficult thing because every day is so different. And as a business owner, no day is the same, whether it's the kids or the business side of things. And so making sure that every decision that I'm making is actually quite well thought about and I'm just not making decisions just as I go. Like I have to think, okay, if my kids ask me to do something but I'm actually trying to re reply to an email, which one in that point in time is more important? And so if one of them is more important, say it's the kids looking at a drawing that they've done, then I actually have to stop thinking about that email. So everything has to become a really conscious thought and I have to put all my energy into that. Otherwise, if I try and do multiple things at the same time, I actually, I start to feel like I'm failing or just not on top of things. So even though I feel like I'm behind in business sometimes because I've got to focus on the kids, this is the life I chose. So I have to pick one thing and kind of do that really well. Mm. It sounds like doing that in that in that process gives you the the confidence to go into whatever it is. Being like, this is the right choice. I'm going to completely commit to this, mm. this task here, and you're kind of confident knowing that's the right thing to do, and that kind of carries you through it. I don't know if I'm confident when I'm doing it, but <laughs> I think like if I've chosen to do something, I will do my best mm. um, at that choice. Mm. Mm. Yeah, nice. So tell me, how did you get into like how did hero packaging start? like how did you create that i'm mm. curious about that kind of story because it's not yeah. you don't i don't think people are waking up one morning and being like we need to do a compostable bag i think yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, it yeah that kind of product it doesn't you don't it doesn't just come to you like that but i had a previous business where i was doing the wrong thing there were so many products being shipped out in satchels and shipping mailers and bubble wrap that was just all single use plastic and i wasn't I wasn't really an environmentalist. I didn't really think about it at that time. I also was quite uh, young. So it was about five years ago and I wasn't thinking about that. And then there was one day when I saw all the packages just sitting there waiting for the postie to come and collect them and it was just all plastic. Everything I looked at in that room was plastic. My kids were there playing with the plastic wrapping um, and I thought it was the most, it was pretty horrifying. So it was kind of like one of those moments where I thought, you know what, let me see if there's something else out there. I went home and I just went online and I obviously just started Googling things and I couldn't find anything that was kind of like plastic, um, but 
could be maybe broken down or, you know, there was only things like paper and boxes and things and didn't work for us. And so that's kind of where the seed was planted where I was like, you know what, I'm going to make something. I'm going to have a solution to my business. And then I uh, I did that for my business and, and basically asked a whole bunch of other small business owners whether they would be interested in that. And I just kind of put it on socials and I did some ads around it. And we got such overwhelming feedback that people wanted it that I knew it was a business. Mm. It's such an important thing. We just moved house recently and we had to buy a couple new things, which we try and avoid in itself. We had to get a couple mm. new things. The packaging is ridiculous. You know, it yeah. is like it's unnecessary how much packaging there is nowadays. And I'm like, well, okay, I can recycle some of this cardboard. But aside from that, that plastic is going to be just as it is for thousands yeah. of years, Correct. you know, and, and, and we're just one couple, you know, is happening every day on a mass scale. This stuff is being created and then it's just out there forever. Like it's a problem. It's a problem and there's no option. So when you buy something, you don't get to choose the packaging it comes in. It is just what it is. If you need that piece of furniture, if you need something, that is all you can do. You can just get it wrapped in plastic and brought to your house. And then what ends up happening is the burden becomes, it becomes a, a consumer problem. So the the factories or whoever's making it Thanks. will wrap it. But then you have to be the one to dispose of it. You're the one with the guilt behind it. You're the one who's actually thinking you're the one doing wrong and it's not fair. Mm. But yeah, everything. And to this day, you know, obviously I sell sustainable packaging, but I still do online shopping. I still am trying to, I don't do as much as I used to, but I still get packages delivered home. And every time I get plastic, I think I'm not doing my job properly. Mm. And I feel like almost miserable because this is what I'm trying to prevent, but it's everywhere. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I remember once I was at a construction site. Um, there's probably a lot of people listening who have been to more than just one construction site. But yeah. it's in, it's insane, even like not on a consumer level, but on like a on a business level, the amount of the businesses that are in the construction trade, the rubbish coming out of a construction site is ridiculous. It's 10x, 20x what it is on a on a residential personal level, you know, just buying mm-hmm. things home. Like, are there any, are there any sort of, I guess what you're doing in that space, you know, packaging up big white goods and these kind of things? Totally. Yeah. You, it, it just requires someone to make that choice to have a business in that um, and to target those big businesses who are willing to make a change. And the good thing is, is that like governments and that they're slowly making changes where they're kind of banning, you know, the single-use plastics and things like that. And people can still get around it. But if you're going to make big change, it has to come from corporations that are bigger and they sell big items and they target other businesses and they sell things in bulk. But the issue here is it's always coming down to cost. So when even when we're talking to big companies and saying, hey, do you want to make the switch over to sustainable packaging, compostable packaging, recycled hex wrap, whatever it is, It'll all, the question is always, yeah, but you're 20% more expensive than what we currently use. So it, the answer is no, mm. even though that means it's a few cents more expensive in the scale of things, right? Mm. But even that, they're working everything into their margin. They haven't built a business around being sustainable and they're only doing it and, and wanting to do it because people are telling them to do so. So until I think some company comes in and actually decides, you know what, I'm going to start a business from scratch in this, like white goods, for example, you know, but with sustainability in mind, it's very hard to change those huge legacy policies that they've got. Yeah. Yeah. I totally resonate with that. Even in our business, you know, we're we're starting to transition over to completely just cardboard only packaging. Mm. And like, that wasn't an easy, it's been a two year thing just to get to the point where we're starting to design that packaging and create it because from various suppliers there was pushback yeah you know? absolutely but can i just say how amazing your business is just on a side note here <laughs> i mean like i i explored all your stuff the other day um and you know i've been talking to you and i i can't wait to get my own but i was looking at your website and just the stuff that you're doing it's incredible and I when I spoke to you for the first time, it was I think maybe a couple of months ago now. Mm-hmm. But when I spoke to you first first time, it was like my mind was blown. Like the stuff that we discussed, the the reason why you're doing what you're doing. I mean, like there is sustainable packaging, which is obviously what I do, but 
I the story behind your stuff is just so powerful and I, I've been thinking about it so often. Mm. So I just wanted to say that you've made such a big impact on me and we only met that one time. Mm. Thank you. Uh, that's that's really, really nice. I guess to give the listeners a bit more context there. So at Found Space, we uh, support a charity, Greening Australia, and they were, there was a tree planting day and uh, here are packaging and yourself, Anita, w- was there and we just met, you know, the universe brought us together, whatever that might be. And yeah, we we're planting some trees together and getting wet and getting muddy and um, we had a really nice conversation. And it was really fortuitous for me too because um, I'd been having conversations about you know, compostable packaging and things with my partner for the previous couple of weeks. And then there you were, and you guys are doing amazing things too, which is why I wanted to kind of get you on the show today, you know? Yeah. Thank you. No, it was, it was just, I had to say it because like, we're talking about my business, but I think when I met you and and learned about yours and your story as well, it's just incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, okay. So how we kind of touched on at the start, but you kind of full on. I'm curious, like, to kind of unpack a bit more of your lifestyle, if you will. You know, oftentimes on the podcast, we get some amazing, uh, like, super busy, but like really health conscious people. And I love unpacking how they go about their day to day because it's obviously working for them, <laughs> you know, and it's obviously working for you. So, like, tell me a bit more, like, a bit about your day to day and how you kind of manage the stress of it all, but also being a good mom and being a good business owner. I'm curious yeah. about that. Yeah, um, great question. And I love answering this because I've thought really long and hard about this. Hmm. One thing, so I'll talk you through the day to day, which is walking uh, with no phone, Hmm. the first thing that I try and do. And I I can't do it often. So I try once a day. And um, and that for me is one of the best things I can do. I don't use a phone. I don't listen to podcasts. I literally am just walking for about three to four kilometres. And if I can do it with my husband, great, but I like doing it by myself too, just because I can just be by myself. Um, And doing that is a really important thing. And then, you know, I have time blocking. So it's, you know, in the daytime when the kids are out of the house, that is focused on work. And then when they come back, it's 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. of uninterrupted children time and dog time and then when they're asleep it is again work um, which to some people isn't healthy but you know I have to make up that four hours uh, after they go to bed and then the best part of this which people sometimes love and sometimes don't love is that I have to turn back into a partner because we are co-parents and we are co-business owners. Um, and we have to also remember that we're husband and wife. And so we sit in bed and we watch our reality TV for an hour. <laughs> um, and it's our time to completely switch off. And we don't talk business or kids, you know. And this to me, it is a bit of a routine. And no matter what, if I go out and have dinner with my friends or if I am working late um, or if I have a meeting at night, no matter what time we finish whatever we're doing, we will sit and watch an episode of something together. Um, And for me, that is like a really nice way to connect and unwind with my husband, you know, after a big day. And that's something that we've done for years and years. Mm. I love that. What rules do you guys have? Because working with partners is hard. I watched my parents, you know, work together when I was younger. And I honestly thought, I couldn't fucking think of anything worse, <laughs> you know, like what rules do you guys have to really separate the business and personal life? We have completely separate personalities, completely separate job titles. We don't touch the same things in the business. We do different things. Even with the kids, we have different responsibilities, um, but we've been together so long that it's almost unspoken. It's not, I don't say you must do this, this, and this. Um, And he says, you didn't do this. We just know, like it just happens that way. And I think also, when you know each other so well that he knows when I'm about to get pissed off um, or I need some space, he will back away. I think sometimes it's just knowing the other person. And there it's not always easy, obviously, but it works well because we have such division of roles as well as our personalities. So we don't, we try not to step on each other's toes. It's hard. I mean, I saw my parents they also work together. So my mum has a doctor's practice and my dad has always been her receptionist. And um, from, I think it's been about 
25 years. Um, and I saw them going to work together. He would be at the front desk and answering. And he's not a people's person, but she wanted him near her at all times. And I really love that. Then they'll go home. And to this day, they go for a long walk together and they spend a lot of time together. I enjoyed seeing that. I actually love to see that lifestyle. I love that um, that we can be with the kids and then work after they go to bed and they have no idea how stressed we can get. I like that. Like I actually, I enjoy that everyone can actually enjoy their life as well as being stressed sometimes, which is normal. But I think we've created a life where um, we can enjoy it too. Mm. And that's the flip side of it really. It's a really positive side of, of working with, you know, a husband or a wife or, or family in general. It, it, like you have this connection, which you otherwise you just wouldn't have and and like the satisfaction that you guys must derive from having this business and running it together and achieving the things that you've achieved must be pretty fulfilling I would imagine yeah and it, it wasn't like an accidental thing where oh we've started a business together and now we've got to make it work it was mm. a very conscious choice where he was working for someone else and uh, we had to really think about if you joined me in this business can would we be okay with that and it was like a it was a decision that we made and and we like i said you make a decision you've got to do it well or at least try your best so that's what we're doing mm, yeah beautiful so what are some of the things you're doing uh and it may not be a long list like to to manage some of that stress because you've got team you've got a big business like that stuff kind of the responsibility of it all weighs on you what, what are some of the things you do to just defrag a little bit besides the reality tv no <laughs> um i it's very difficult because the risk is always there and you know i don't hide behind my product so i am the face of hero packaging i am at the forefront of everything if it goes right anita did that if it goes wrong tell anita I'm never going to buy from her again. Uh, I see all emails that come through to our customer service team and I don't respond because they do that, but I love to ha- see the notification so I know what's going on and the brand sentiment. Um, and right now we're dealing with an issue, you know, which is a really big issue because our mailers, they start to biodegrade after nine to 12 months. So they can't be left sitting anywhere. A lot of our customers have bought these mailers, you know, two years ago, and they're now trying to package up their first order and they're breaking down in their hands. And so it becomes a, a blame issue where we didn't tell them. So this is a, this is a really stressful thing that I'm currently dealing with. Um, I, I don't know how to answer your question of how I manage the stress. All I know is how to try and fix problems. So I'm I'm really just trying to um, think about it like I was the customer and think, okay, what would I want in this situation? And it would be, I just need replacements. I need and I need that problem fixed. And then I need to fix the brand issue as well. So I can see now all the emails coming through is like, tell Anita that this is happening. But you know, the business is bigger than just me. There's uh, quite a few of us in it, but it's always tell Anita, I'm not going to buy X, Y, Z, it broke down in my hands and stuff. So I really need to fix this issue. And I've realized as well that before I get frustrated or before I get really, um, upset if i haven't communicated properly that there is a shelf life or if there's something with these mailers that's on me so what can i do going forward i can only try and make them happy and then i can make sure that new customers know exactly what's happening and that is it and i have to almost distance myself and realize the business is not me there is space that that business has to run as a business and I can only do as I would if I worked for someone else, which is trying to fix the problem. Because if I try and um, bring it into my personal life, which happens when you're a business owner, uh, things get complicated and you can be really unhappy all day long, but you you need to distance yourself. And that's what I'm trying to do. Mm, Words of wisdom. Yeah. You got to like decompartmentalize it a bit. Yes. Yes. I am not found space. You are not hero packaging, even though you're the you're the face of it, you know, and there's many other business owners listening. I'm sure they can all relate to something goes wrong and like until you fix that problem, it's on your mind, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh man. Um, okay, so let's talk about that a little bit more. So tell me about your your mailers and 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 I'm curious, like, how do they break down? How do you how do you how do you actually get them to break down in a compost because I've had some of those like bio pack container 
see through container things before and I'm like, I swear that's not breaking down for like a thousand years, even though it says that it does. So I'm mm-hmm. curious how your bags kind of work. And I know you've got some new products out there as well. We can talk about those perhaps. Yeah. So these bags, what they need to be composted correctly. So it's, I mean, they can break down in your hand after two, three years. Yes, absolutely. That's what they do in landfill. They just start to disintegrate. That's not the ideal situation because they're not being composted properly and they're not being turned into fertilizer, which is at the end of the day, that's what we want. We want that circular economy. Um, What they need is they are treated as dry materials in a compost bin. And so you need wet ingredients and dry ingredients and they act like the leaves and the paper and they will go in there with the wet ingredients and they need to be aerated and within four months essentially turn into compost or fertilizer, which will then go into your garden, your plants and whatever. Um, In terms of those biopack, I haven't seen the see-through ones, but they do have the paper ones, which are really good because they just turn into that pulp um, when you put it into the compost bin. And I've tested those ones and they're fantastic. Um, And I haven't actually seen the see-through ones. I feel like the see-through ones, are they hard plastic or what are they? Yeah, they feel like fairly hard plastic and they've got like a green thing around. It might be a different brand. I might be using the wrong brand biopack there, but they're, they're like, the idea is they're compostable, like plastic containers. This is this is an issue, right? Because there's a lot of greenwashing going on, and um, I I genuinely love Biopack. I think they're doing a great job, I, and I'm not talking about them, but there is a lot of greenwashing. So there's a lot of hey, this is biodegradable. And so the term biodegradable is mm. it can be used for plastic. Um, all plastic is technically biodegradable. And this is the, it is the most annoying thing that we'll run an ad, for example, which will say home compostable packaging. And then all the comments will be like, great. So this is, no, this is biodegradable. Great. I love biodegradable packaging. And our customers will do an unboxing experience on their social media platforms and say the best biodegradable packaging. Actually, we don't want to be known as that because anything with the word biodegradable in it, it could be anything. It could be single use plastic. Um, it could be anything that you see packaging come in and it's it's actually pretty bad. It just means that it breaks down into microplastics or it breaks down into something. Uh, what we want to be known as is home compostable, which means it will break down with no waste and no microplastics. And it's a very difficult thing to keep educating people on that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. But in terms of the way it works, that's how it works. You need to be in a home compost bin. And in terms of things like words to look for, always try and ignore biodegradable and a lot of companies are now using oxo biodegradable and uh, that's even worse wow. um and another what does that even mean it means that they have added an additive to single use plastic oh. so that what what that means is that it when it goes into landfill it all the worms can eat it but they poop out microplastics and then they eat it again and they poop out microplastics it's actually not creating the circular economy but what they say is it's landfill biodegradable and there's no such thing and that actually annoys the shit out of me (laughs) um but they've used it so that they can have a business in the sustainability space Mm. um and they've seen them in articles where journalists don't know what they're talking about um promoting this and it's such a big industry everyone wants to get into it um, so I would say like, you've got to be really, really careful. Mm. Okay. So avoid biodegradable where possible and really look for something that is home compostable. Home compostable and with certifications, just mm. check your facts, check what they're saying is true. It's really easy to go to an Alibaba um, and type in biodegradable mailers and get some stuff. It's really easy. They all say they do it. In fact, a lot of them, what I've seen, and sometimes I do some research on there, they slap because we have Hero Pack on our mailers. They slap Hero Pack on their mailers, like on the logo. And so if you look on Alibaba, you'll see a whole bunch of packaging with Hero Pack on it. With, they're not our suppliers. <laughs> They've just done it. And then when I email them, they take it off. Um, but until they're caught, they just do that. So you don't know what you're buying. Mm. you got to be super, super careful. Okay. And is this similar then um, that you can get some bags which you, you can put in water? Is that right? That, yeah. Like, break down? Is that is that the s- similar thing? Like- yeah. So we, we have just launched those and they're actually, I think they are going to be live on the website next week, but they are water-soluble bags. Amazing. So these are different. These are compostable, but that's not what we're doing here. What we're trying to do is 
okay, let me start with the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, people told us that in apartments, they don't want to have a home compost bin. They don't like it. They don't like the thought of it. They don't have space. They also don't want to have a worm farm. So, and I understand some people live in a very, you know, small apartment and they don't have time. They don't have space for this stuff. So what we tried to do was create a solution where they didn't need one, but would still uh, have packaging that was good for the environment. So we've created a water soluble bag, which is made of a um, polyvinyl alcohol. And that breaks down um, into this marine safe liquid. And so if you pour boiling water on it, it, the bag basically disappears. And then that water can be poured once it's cool into plants in your garden, down the sink. Um, and the best thing about this bag as well, it can also be recycled. So I, it, it's a really exciting thing for us um, and we're still doing the science behind it in terms of learning about the materials um, but it's just I'm like I'm very I'm excited because it's something that we can actually solve that problem of apartment living um, where because they couldn't home compost so any consumer that got our packages before it was they would just throw it away and that's like the worst thing it just acts like plastic you know and I don't defeats the purpose so this is the next step mm -hmm. okay and super question here so um polyvinyl alcohol i think you said they're not like a form of plastic that it doesn't break down into microplastics or anything like that it's different it doesn't break down into microplastics it okay so if we're going technical mm -hmm. everything that is synthetic uh is classified as plastic so what we're saying here is I can't say it's not plastic. Um, what it is, is it's not single use plastic. It's a synthetic uh, PVOH material, which essentially breaks down into nothingness. Um, and it it's marine safe, non-toxic. It's, um, yeah. So it's a very fine line. We have to say that we can't say it's not plastic because anything you look at around your room, uh, most of it is. Uh, even when it, it breaks down, even paper, you've got to be really careful because if it's made in a synthetic way, technically it's actually called plastic. It's yeah, a really right. weird thing. Wow. But yes, it doesn't break down into microplastics. Yeah, okay, amazing, cool. I really like that. So then you just getting your things arrive, having your things arrive and then put the bag in some water. <laughs> well, yes, but then I had, uh, we were actually at a trade show last week and we had someone come up and say, yeah, but my customers won't want to put it in boiling water. And so my, my response to that is, but then that we're trying to create a solution and I don't know how else to help because, <laughs> you know, if they don't want to separate their recycling or they don't want to home compost or they don't want to pop it in boiling water, what do they want to do? Yeah. Because if they want to throw it in trash, I... I, I'm trying to educate you to educate them to say this is what you do. But if they don't want to do it, then I don't know how to help. Mm. Absolutely. It's all about education, this stuff. You know, we, we're we doing things now which 20 years ago we would have said was took too long, too hard, whatever, mm. in many areas of our life. And this is this is no different. You know, there's an education around the importance of it. And whether that's composting or putting a bag in water or whether it's just generally minimising the use of things which can't be degraded around the home mm. or whether it's living a, a cleaner lifestyle to minimize the impact on the environment, you know, or taking some extra time to separate the, what goes in the right bin when, you know, you go to Europe, they're onto this stuff. You know, when I was in Germany, it was, God, it was four years ago now. And we went into the Airbnb and the guy showed, there's five bins, right? Yeah. And to us in Australia, we're like, you got to be kidding. That's yeah. <laughs> But to them, it was like, well, of course there's five bins and this is what goes in each one. And and the guy was literally was like, don't get it wrong. Like this yeah. is really important. <laughs> yeah. It. Yeah, that's like our house. It's so funny. We've got, I don't know how many bins we've got in our kitchen. It's it's almost ridiculous. Um, mm. But we, and that's what we had to do. But, you know, this wasn't always like that. And we only because we're in this space now, we're so aware of these issues. And I understand con normal consumers are so busy in their daily lives. They don't even realize there's a need for a change so it is up to us we are, we are trying our best but then we expect the businesses that we sell to to also try and educate the customers that they sell to yeah yeah 100 percent. you touched on a couple of things which i i just want to um talk about briefly so you talked about the the circular economy a couple of times what what exactly do you mean by that so when something is produced and then used 
so we want to take it from the environment, make something of it, and then it should return to the environment without causing any harm. Mm. And so sometimes they talk about recycling as a circular economy, but I, if it's recycled and recycled and actually is being recycled, yes, I understand that. But a lot of the time, 91% of things are not being recycled, so you can't call it a circular economy. So when I refer to that, I'm talking about we will make something with natural ingredients. So say our mailers is made from starch and we will produce something out of it. And by the time it's finished, it'll go back into the environment. Mm, yeah, love that. Okay. And you also mentioned worm farms. So can some of your mailers be used in a worm farm? Like yeah, this? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Again, just like dry ingredients. So like your leaves and paper, the only thing I would say is that you need to cut them up and chop them up really finely and, and pop them in. Even in a compost bin, that's the best way to do it. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, that's actually super handy. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I, <laughs> exactly. And so you just assume people know, but no, um, all labels, all adhesive, anything that's on there, if people have stuck tape or express posts, things yeah. like all that needs to be removed. It mm. needs to be chopped up into little pieces and then popped into wherever you want. Um, this just gave me a thought. Are there any compostable like stickers that go on fruit? I feel like that needs. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I only say that because we buy um we buy most of our food organic, but we'll get like yellow kiwis. Whenever I cut them up, sometimes I'm too lazy to take the stickers yeah. off, and then I regret <laughs> it like three months later when it's all in the compost. You know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No. I. I. We haven't thought about that at all. There are some companies who are really focused on doing things in the grocery space. Mm. We're focused on e-commerce, so like shipping things to yeah. customers. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. There may not be a lot of money in fruit stickers either. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? All right, cool. Okay. What do you think is the future for sustainability in general? Like where is the overall kind of space heading based on what you know? So I think well, there's, there's a couple of things here. One is um, educating kids. This is like a, because the only change that's going to come is if we start to tell kids. So, okay. So for example, this is not to do with sustainability, but I was talking to my kids. I've got a um, seven-year-old, a six-year-old and a one-year-old. Yeah. And I was talking to my seven-year-old about smoking and cigarettes. And I was trying to tell her about that it may look cool and your friends will absolutely do it. But what will end up happening is that every time they're smoking, it's affecting their lungs, their heart, their body, their insides. You can't see it always because it just looks cool on the outside, but on the inside, you're turning black, you know, like it's just not good for your body. And so I think educating kids from a really young age, just to make it cool that sustainability is not something extra in your life that you've got to work hard for. It's not homework. Mm -hmm. It's just something cool that we can do as a family. It's like, if you take the compost in our home compost bin and we get the kids to put it into our garden and they're like with their gloves, patting it all down and it is such a fun thing to do. And the fact that they had a banana, put the peels in the compost bin and suddenly it's not there anymore. It's turned into fertilizer and they're putting it into their own garden. That concept in their minds, if we can start that early, fantastic. Because that's what's going to promote the next generation of entrepreneurs who are in the sustainability space. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing I would say is it is you know, as consumers, we can only do so much. We can replace our coffee cups and we can maybe replace plastic water bottles and um, compost at home. Good changes, but minimal changes. It's not going to change the world. What we need is businesses to completely change the way that they're doing things. So I think there was one story that I heard once where Starbucks, the CEO, he shut down Starbucks for like an hour or something and they lost eight billion dollars something ridiculous okay yeah. um but he did that because he wanted to improve customer service um and he trained them all up in that hour or something similarly we need to do that we need to get businesses to say i'm going to actually have my profits go down a little bit so we can educate staff and and actually ch make changes in our process so in the long term not only is my business sustainable in terms of growth but it's also sustainable in terms of uh, we're helping the planet um but it's a really it's a really difficult thing to do because everything is coming down to money uh, and we're finding this a lot but if i will say the future of sustainability it is like big corporations making big changes and that's kind of what we're waiting for mm. Amen to that.
Yeah. <laughs> something so fulfilling about doing something, you know, like you were saying, educating the kids, do some compost, get it out there, get your hands dirty, get it in the garden. There's something deeply fulfilling about that on like a real human species level, you know, it just feels right doing that. It does. It does. Yeah. Yeah. And if nothing else, just do it for that reason. You know, when you've got a compost going and you put it out in the garden, you're just like, yeah. And then you see some fruit and veg grow from the compost. You're like, yeah. "Yeah." You know, feels really good and, you know, it inspires those around you. I I even find people, um, you know, even like early 20s, certainly where I grew up, wasn't a conversation wasn't something that was spoken about and um there's a lot of i think there's a lot of room for education in that in that space as well you know to what you said just like the younger generations because um they're the people that are going to be running the businesses one day you know yeah absolutely they are and if you can start them thinking in in terms of that as well as money making mm-hmm. you're onto winning things right because you can be really entrepreneurial and no one's saying to um, not make money. It's saying you're saying you be entrepreneur, you make money, and you can still help. You can actually still help, like what you're doing in a different way. You're still helping, but you're still making money. This is the whole point of life, right? And you're building a life that you like. You can do that and still help others, um, and even supporting things like greening Australia. Like we, we, you do what you can to have a great life that you choose, but then you can do things that are better than what your the generations before you did. Mm. Mm. Yeah, one hundred percent. If there was one thing that you could leave listeners with, what would it be? Um, exactly what we spoke about, which is if you choose to do something, um, no excuses. Try your best to do it really, really well. It should be you should make a conscious decision every day. So every day is filled with you know hundreds and hundreds of different decisions if you can really prioritize the ones that are important and make conscious decisions and put your energy into it and really think about what you're doing and not do things you know do multiple things at the one time i think you're winning because you can actually start to control your life in a really positive way beautiful and anita if people want to find out more about what you guys are doing and get involved how can they do that so you can go to Instagram and we're hero.packaging and then you can also find me and I would prefer it if you connect with me personally because I love to just talk to people. Um, LinkedIn is a great one and my name is spelt in a really funny way. So it's A-N-A-I-T-A. Um, but connect with me there or just find us on Instagram. Mm. Well, thank you so much for coming on podcast. It's been an absolute treat. Uh, you've certainly got my inspirational juices flowing. So thank you so much. I'm so glad. And thank you for having me. Welcome.